Hello, hello. Welcome to the first Pit Roundtable. This is the place where we jump in as a community and talk about things that are ultimately going to help us be more productive in our tech jobs, our tech lives. Um, I like to focus not just on the job aspect, but also on the everyday life aspect, because as we, as we proceed more and more into this tech-infused lifestyle, it really is, the, the, the barrier is like disappearing. You know, people no longer go to work and then like come home and lead two different lives. It's like, it's pretty much one in the same. Um, but, uh, this week is our first week. It is, it's a little small, but we're excited to at least be getting off the ground. Um, I have Mandaris with me. Mandaris, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing just great. Um, so let me just make sure my, okay, good. I just want to make sure the cameras are going to switch properly as they should. But this week we are talking because it's the beginning of the year and the first podcast episode for this year is actually on goal setting with BJ Burns um, from the Complete Developer Podcast. Um, I wanted to bring him in to talk about how they set up their goals for the year because they do a really big task on this. Like they actually, last year, their entire podcast was set on like keeping up with their goals and how to set good goals and, and making sure that you're keeping up with them and following up on them. But then they also do like these big episodes at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year, like of how you, of what their goals are and then how they, and at the end of the year, they recap those goals. Uh, so I wanted to bring BJ in. I really enjoyed that conversation. And if you haven't checked it out yet, it is on the podcast uh, website at productivityintech.com. Hold on. All right. So I wanted to talk about goals with people in the community because I know that goals are like one of those things that everybody has. Uh, but if they're anything like me, they do a horrible job at, at working towards them. Uh, something that I've always noticed is I am great at saying what I want to do. I am very, very bad at actually getting it done. And, and that was one of the reasons why productivity in tech is so important to me because it creates that community um, and that accountability. Uh, having people in there that know your goals and that are helping you work towards them and, and providing you with resources and feedback, I, I think that is extremely important. Um, Mandara, so let's start off. First of all, like, how are you with goals? Are you an avid goal setter? Or are you, you know, you kind of just live life as it comes? Uh, I find that uh, when it comes to me and goals, there, there are two times when I actually, you know, look at my goals. That's either when I'm uh, trying to achieve them or when things are really, really chaotic. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? Where am I going in life? Uh, I feel that, uh, you know, those are, for most people, when it comes down to goals, those are the most important and only times they ever consider them. Uh, you have those people who are really driven and like, okay, I'm doing this because of some uh, overarching um, dream or goal that I have set for myself. And then you have those who are like, okay, it's the beginning of the year. Uh, well, let's, what things do I want to start doing for myself? Uh, and I find myself swinging back and forth between those two. Um, you never, when things are going great, I have a tendency to say, all right, well, I have things under control. And then sometimes I let those goals or I don't do a review of what those goals are because things are going great. I, I mean, well, hey, I must be following my goals. And life has a way of just kind of changing such that you have to, uh, I know for me, I need to review where I'm going, review where my, um, my goals are. Otherwise, you know, I'll find myself back into the chaos. So how do I set those? I, I typically um, write down a couple things that I want to do on paper. And then I, I put them in the OmniFocus and uh, I check on those and, you know, the little review time pops up. 
uh, I feel that my biggest weakness actually is with uh, not doing that review or scheduling time to do the review of my own role. So um, I just write them down. I tell a couple people and set it down and hopefully, hopefully I review them and move forward with them. Yeah, I definitely get that. I mean, one of the things that I have always struggled with was the review. Uh, one of the things that I do now is I review in the morning. Um, I kind of like give myself a little pep talk, you know, like, like the pregame huddle, basically. And like when I go to work, like I, I get in at around 730 and the first 30 minutes, I, I don't take calls. I don't check email. Like it is okay. Take as much time as you need for up to 30 minutes to really figure out what you want to get accomplished for the day. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit more talking about like, how do you distinguish the difference between, you know, like a life goal and a, you know, just a daily goal. You know, I, I think that both are important. I think that you have to have both and you have to review both accordingly. Um, that was one of the things that we talked about on the podcast episode a lot. And, and as you mentioned, you know, as life is happening, we tend not to think too much about our goals until it's really like, whoa, now I'm like way over here when I wanted to be over here. And that's, that's such a painful thought to have and a painful position to be in. But I, I think the way that we fix that is by visually having our goals in place and, and really letting our goals guide the direction that we want to go in. Um, and, and as you mentioned, you know, that creates a relevancy. You know, if we talk about having smart goals, the SMART goals, you know, a lot of people use that R to be relevant. Um, if I look at my goals now, my goals could change at any second. Um, if, if life hits you and life hits you in a different direction, that means my goals have to change. But in order to notice that I have to be reviewing my goals regularly. Um, I, I think that's something that we can definitely all like figure out um, together. And I, I think that's, that's something that we have to work together. You have to work with, you know, if you have a life partner, you have to work with your life partner. If you have, um, you know, kids, <laughs> you know, you have to work with, with kids on a goal. You have to, you know, work with friends maybe. And, and I mean, ultimately the people that are looking at your life are going to see things that you will miss. So I often recruit people around me to help me figure out my goals. And I think that's where like this community has been great because I've been, you know, we say I've been rolling with, with this community for like two years now and being able to have conversations with people on a regular basis for two years, they really start to see things in my life that I might be missing. So let's, let's talk about, I have a few questions here. Let's jump on, on the first question. And we kind of covered it a little bit. How and when do you set your goals? You mentioned that you use OmniFocus, but are you, are you like establishing those goals at like the beginning of the year or are you like, do you just have them just roll over, like constantly roll over? I, I think uh, I constantly roll them over because uh, I feel that, you know, yeah, New Year's is a great milestone for establishing a goal because you can say, oh, I've done this from every single day since the New Year. But I feel that uh, sometimes we fall and we mess up and, you know, we can't just say, oh, well, you know, it's not New Year, so I guess uh, I'll just give up on it or start something new. Um, for me, I it, it's usually when... I feel that there's a, a need to change something overall. That's when I say, all right, well, uh, I, I enjoy this or I don't enjoy this. What can I do to move towards this, this beautiful area or whatnot? So um, I usually use um, just, uh, I'll start at either the beginning of the month, the beginning of the week or whenever I need to. And I say, all right, well, let me see if I can challenge myself to do a new goal for um, a new week or a hundred days. Uh, for example, I started the 100 days of code uh, and I am actually doing that uh, with myself and uh, my, my daughter. 
and we're just doing free code camp, building websites, looking at kitty cat pictures, and that has been fun and something that I do every day. Uh, I make the I make the goal something that is, will overall improve my life. So I look at something and I say, all right, I want to improve my life this way, and how do I get to that? So I break it down, and uh, it, it's sometimes important to understand what the actual goal is. You know, you can say, oh, I want to get in better shape. Well, what do you mean by getting in better shape? Do you mean you want to run longer? Do you want to lift more weights? Or, or do you just want to look better with your shirt off? Those are all different things. And, you know, you have to understand what you actually want. A lot of people, I feel, know what they don't want. But finding out what you really want is, I feel, a lot more nuanced. Well, let's let's jump into that a little bit because um, when when I think of the how part of that question, there really is two pieces of that puzzle. There is the um, what kind of goals are you setting, and and we can go over the the smart goal idea, but also what level are these goals? Uh, one of the one of the really cool things that uh, that BJ mentioned with is that each goal that he has usually has something above or below it as well. So, you know, and, and I've kind of done the same thing. I use the metaphor of like a triathlon, except mine's like a, a duathlon because I only have two like top level goals. Um, and I can even share those. Like my top level goals are, uh, if I open up my bear notes here, uh, my top level goals are one, to be a good husband. And, and I say top level goals as in like if I'm on my deathbed, the two things that matter to me. And, and that's what, cause I mean, at the end of the day, like, I mean, we can set financial goals, we can set uh, career goals, but at the end of the day, when you're on your deathbed, you're not going to care about your career. You're not going to care about, you know, your finances. You're going to have like two, you know, going to have a few main thoughts that are like, did I do this? Yes or no. And if I did, then I'm happy with the life that I lived or I'm not happy with it. Um, so for me, my two are to be a good husband. Eventually, once, you know, when we have kids, that'll be to be a good husband and to be a good father. Uh, but then, and then my other goal, my other race goal is to be a strong mentor to others. And, and as you can kind of, if you look at, you know, my life, I'm, I'm big into spending time with my, with my wife. And then I'm also big with devoting time to Pitt. And Pitt is really that platform where I get to work on that mentorship aspect as well as doing some of the local community stuff. Now, obviously, those are not what we would call smart goals. Those aren't, you know, specific, measurable, you know, you have to really look at that. But the way that I make them smart is with other goals. So when I look at being, you know, a, a strong husband or being a good husband, I then look at that, okay, what does that look like? And then I say, well, there's a financial component. There's a time component. There's a, you know, am I working and doing the right thing, you know, for my family component? And those are where we actually get like smart, actionable goals of, I want to do this thing that I see as kind of a space that's empty in my life. So we talked about um, more of the how, and you said you kind of let your goals just carry through and you change them as needed. Um, one of the things that I do is when I, I set my goals, but I set them based on the level that they are. So like my two overarching goals, I definitely review those goals. Um, I review my life goals around my anniversary just because my anniversary is in July. So that works. Um, it's like, it's just a good time to do that. It's, at the, it's in the middle of the year. Um, and then I review my mentorship goals at the beginning of the year, but not because it's the beginning of the year. It's because Pitt was started around the beginning of the year. So for me, it's like, it's just a good time every year. I want to go and see how the past year was, where can I improve? What can I change? And it just happens that that's at the beginning of the calendar year as well. Um, and then the smaller goals, you know, the, the parts of those that make those overarching goals smart are 
I review them monthly and then then I have like kind of milestones or achievements that I want to set each week and I just review those. Um, like I said, I review at the beginning of the week. I don't review at the end just because I'm really bad and by the end of the week I'm just like, I want to relax, not think about anything. But then on Monday when I'm getting into the planning for the next week, I sit down and I go, okay, how did I do last week? And, and I, I look at that and then come up with new goals for that week as well. It's good. It's good. And it's good because it sounds like you've established the habit of reviewing your goals. You know, like, you know yourself, you're like, okay, I know that at the end of the week, I'm, I don't want to do it. At the beginning of the week, yes, that's when I have the most energy, the most time, most drive to actually do it. That's great. I think that ha- knowing where, like how you best work is, is a big part of goal setting. I mean, honestly, that's, that's where most of, most of these resolutions fail. Like if, if you know that the gym life just isn't your life, but you like set a goal of I'm going to get into the gym every single week, like, okay, well, if you're going to do that, you need to make it so that the gym life is as convenient as possible for you to accomplish. Like that's the thing that kills me is you have people that like don't wake up early at all. Say I'm going to get up early every morning. And it's like, eh, good luck with that. You're going to, you're going to wake up early the first day and then the next day you're going to sleep in. Whereas in trying to maybe wean yourself back a little bit and saying, Hey, you know, I'm going to wake up 10 minutes early, 10 minutes earlier each week until I'm at the time that I want to be waking up. And if you're saying like, Oh, Hey, I want to get up early in the morning and work out. Well, why is it so important that you work out early in the morning? I mean, there might be a good reason, but you could also say like, Hey, instead of waking up at five in the morning to go run, why don't you talk to your boss and say, Hey, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm having some health problems. I need to, my doctor said I need to, you know, shed a few pounds. Do you mind if I either A, come in maybe about in 30 minutes or an hour later? And, or if I take a little bit extra time during lunch to work out and then go grab a quick sandwich. Um, that's one of the things that, you know, just being open and, and, you know, as I've mentioned before, openly communicating with those around you about what your goals are and seeing if there is a compromise that will make your goals easier to achieve, I think is really the key. Now, some people, obviously, they're just going to say, no, you're supposed to come in at eight, be here at eight. But you can still work around that lifestyle. Like if you work eight to five and you know that like, hey, the second you get home, you're not going to want to do anything, then maybe after work, you do something. Or like I said, maybe during your lunch break, you do something. Or maybe you skip your lunch break so you can leave a little bit earlier. Like instead of taking the full hour, you take, you know, 10 minutes to eat your sandwich, go back to work, and then you can clock out a little early. And I mean, there, there are things that you can do that will help you to achieve your goals without making yourself miserable, for lack of a better phrase, because you're like, like goal setting shouldn't be miserable. Goal achieving shouldn't be miserable. Like, happiness, I feel like happiness is like one of those high arching goals that people want, but you achieve happiness through looking at those goals. And like, I've I've always said, like, I do the things that not necessarily I do the things that I want to do, but I do the things that I know will bring me joy. And if they don't bring me joy, I figure out how can I get this far away from my life? Because if a goal isn't bringing me joy, then the goal is no longer relevant. And then I need to get it out of my life anyway. Hmm. Yeah. Good, good, good. Good stuff. So I talked about it a little bit, talking about how I, I separate my goals from personal and professional. Uh, do you establish distinct goals for your personal and professional life, or is there a lot of overlap involved? Uh, for me, there's uh, a lot of overlap. I, I feel that, you know, um, we can separate a lot of things sometimes but for me in my particular career um what drove me to the career is part of me um and if things are not going well at home there there is a lot that will reflect in my work maybe uh if i'm having trouble or car trouble you know i gotta make sure that 
I take off work in order to drop the car off or um, maybe when I'm supposed to be working on something else, a uh, thought might pop up like, okay, I, I'm having trouble, um, you know, coming up with an idea of how to pay rent or something like that. You know, something, something, those things are interconnected because we are just one person. Um, that being said, you know, we have different aspects. Uh, for me, what I do is I work in the technical space for the state, and there are certain projects and things that uh, I need to understand in order for me to be the most effective at my job. Now, I'm giving time at work, but I, I feel that, you know, maybe if I just spent a little time doing some research on the side, it would make work feel a lot easier. I'd have a little bit more understanding of how uh, a certain product that I'm working on or trying to maintain. Uh, actually is supposed to work so um those are our two balancing features like and, and for example um my job they offer me training in different things um you know you can do idle you can also if you want you can pick up some management skills or some more technical skills so if i want to pursue that training so i can be better at what i do uh, i gotta use some of my time outside of the work because what happens is when you're working you know, I can say no to most things, but sometimes, you know, emergency pops up, uh, we have a down system, and, you know, there goes most of your day. So at what point do I say, all right, hey, if I want to get better at this, where do I use my time? Where is it most effective? And I, I do have a family. I have a, a wife and two kids. They want my time as well. So um, it, it's a balancing act because I do enjoy what I do. So I, I don't feel research and studying and doing training on the side is so much work as it is something that I can do to make my work better, which will make me feel better. On the other hand, hey, if I have to take a day off to, or half a day off to see my daughter do a play during school hours, school hours versus work hours, then I have to do that. It's all a balance act. So um, to go back to the question, um, how do I balance it? It's um, or how do I uh, maintain it? It's all um, just seeing what's most, what has the highest priority in the moment or in that day. You know, I, I like that, and I, I like that you're you're saying that, you know. Ultimately, my goals have a like a hierarchy, and the hierarchy can change over time. That's something that um, I can't remember where I was. I was working with someone on this thought, but it's it's really a, a great concept to say like, okay, here's my one priority, and then whenever you change scenery, that one priority also changes. It's almost like if you had, and I do this a lot. I list like things that I need to get done and I'll actually list them out on paper and like, I'll either like tape them up. Like, like right now I can like show you like my goals. <laughs> like I have, I have them like out in the open written down so I can easily see them. But on this paper and I don't, I can't tell, I might make it a little closer. If you look, you know, my pit goals are on top of my life goals. And that's because when I'm at my desk, I'm working on productivity in tech. That doesn't mean that the life goals aren't more important. It's just the focus is on what I should be focused on. Now, if I go into my kitchen, you know, and we have like a list of things that we got to get done there. And, and we're really, we're blending the line between goals and kind of tasks. I really do believe that a task is nothing but like a very, 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 very low level goal to help you achieve yeah. another goal. So um, not to say that all tasks should be goals, but saying that if you want to set good tasks that you'll follow, start with your goal list and that might help you out. Um, but if I'm in another location, um, like for instance, I run sound at um, our church. So there, the goals that I have set are more directed towards working, you know, with the church and working with that program. And then when I'm at work, my goals that I have listed at work are more focused towards work. Um, and as you said, of course, there are always going to be things that 
that override those goals. Uh, one of the, the things that I did with a, a, a private group that I, I was working with was I had them, had them list like 15 things that mattered most to them. And then the very first thing that I did, and this is a common exercise, you have them basically whittle it down to like five things. Um, but one of the things that I did is I told them, all right, take three of those things and just move them out of this list because we know that they are the three most important things and they matter more than anything else on this list. Mm -hmm. And, and I do that because people start to, they start to lose that focus on what they're supposed to be doing when they mix those extremely important goals with the everyday life goals. I say, know what they are, absolutely know what they are. And if you want to have them written down, that's perfectly fine. But don't, don't put taking care of my family or doing those things that are the absolute most important things. Don't put them on the same level as you do your other goals. Otherwise you'll give them the same amount of attention as you do those other goals. And when you do that, something gives. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. So we, we, we talked a little bit about the goals and how we try to keep them, but what goals do you feel like you struggle the most with? Oh, yeah. I think, oh, looking, looking at myself and looking at my history, uh, I think I struggle with um, long-term goals, not uh, – um, a goal that stretches out a month, but goals that stretch out for uh, two or uh, two months. So it's just like three months or so, right? So um, there are spurts. I am very good at starting things. I'm pretty sure everyone is good at starting things because you know you can see results somewhat quickly. Um, yeah, you you know you see, uh, say for example, um, someone goes to the the gym those first couple weeks that you're there you're like oh wow you know I, I lost five pounds in the first week I'm like okay well you know part of that is just uh, you, you're not drinking as much soda or you know it, it's easy to get those long-term you know it's easy to get those short-term gains but the, those long-term where you're like okay well I've been coding or I've been working on this website for you know six months and still not where I am or it's still not where it is you have to like take a second and say, all right, well, look at where you started and look at where you are right now. You've made progress, right? You've changed who you are in a, in even the smallest way by doing this on a regular basis. You know, you're not, you know, you might be still like, depending on what your, my goal is. I, I'm, okay. So let me just break it down like one or two goals. Like, uh, I do, we met through the Python monthly, which is through uh, Code Newbie. Uh, that's where I first got in contact with you. So uh, I've been doing Python, you know, maybe on and off for about two years. Uh, I think I'm still at a, let's say, uh, a novice level when it comes to that kind of thing. I mean, I can read the code. I can make my own projects and things like that. but I wouldn't go in and say like, okay, I'm a Python developer. I'm a, you know, I'm definitely a long way from being full stack. But I mean, at this point, it, it would be very, very difficult. But I had that as a goal. I still participate in that. I still have things that I'm working on along um, on a regular basis. Uh, of course, that regular basis becomes a lot longer because all of my short-term goals have already been uh, established. I've already done things. So what I need to do or what I want to do is like, okay, well, what is that next thing? So I, I, my, I, feel, I feel I have trouble with long-term visions, I feel, because uh, sometimes some of the stuff is a little vague. Like you said, you know, it's not really smart after a while. It's like, okay, I want to become – good at Python. What does that mean? Uh, well, uh, can I do debugging? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Okay, well, what kind of debug? What is debugging? Those things, making things clear for long-term goals, uh, I have to say, is 
where I struggle the most or maybe articulating them. Uh, you, you know, that's, that's crazy because for me, I'm like the exact opposite. I can usually work on a goal like, Hey, this goal, you know, is going to expand over the you know next five years. I, I don't put timelines on my goals. Like I, I feel like that's, I, I understand people have like, Oh yeah, what's your five year plan, your 10 year plan. Honestly, I have my plan. And as long as I still want to do that thing the next day, it stays on that list. Um, but I think what that's allowed me to do is to really be good at the long-term goals. It's the short-term goals that I have a problem with. So when it's like, Hey, we have a six month project and the goal is to be done with this project in six months. Um, you know, when I say, Oh, Hey, I need to learn something and there's a timeline to it. Uh, mm -hmm. that's where I struggle. Whereas, you know, you were talking about, you know, working with code newbie and doing Python at this point, I've been programming in Python for five years or for almost five years. And it's like, I didn't realize that five years have passed. I also didn't realize how much I've learned in those five years. I basically just said, Hey, I want to learn Python. I want to learn web development with Python. So I'm going to build this website and maintain it. I've been doing that for the past two years. So now whenever I have someone come in and ask a question on that, it's like, Oh wait, yeah, I've done that before. I know the answer to that question. Or, you know, when it's a general Python question, it's like, Oh, Hey, at this point I've built two web applications. So getting that setup process started, I've kind of figured that part out. And that's why I like having goals that are kind of open-ended because if I say, Hey, I want to be a Python developer. I mean, I, I hit that goal a long time ago, but I want to be a better Python developer. You know, that to me, that reaches out towards my overarching goal of being a strong mentor. In order to be a mentor, I have to be knowledgeable on the subject. So the constant pursuit of knowledge isn't something that comes in with a deadline. However, whenever it's like, Hey, I have this specific project at work that we want to get accomplished by like, you know, the third or fourth month, then it's like, okay, crap, I have to learn this like in like a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So how do I, how do I set up a system that allows me to accomplish that goal, you know, within two weeks? That's where I struggle a lot. Yeah. Oh, deadlines. So much fun. <laughs> so, so this is the last question. And, and again, I've, I've kind of already expressed it a little bit on, on mine, but um, how do you keep your goals in mind? You mentioned having that omni focus and having that review time hit. Um, what are you doing or what are you planning to do to make sure that those goals, like you're staying on path towards achieving those goals? Well, um, so what I do is uh, I typically, um, I sit down. And I just do like a mind dump of like, okay, so what is this? What is this? What is this? I find myself using mind maps sometimes, um, especially for my work related goals. So uh, I uh, use X mind because uh, at work we have, it's a window shop. So I can't use all the wonderful Mac software that's accumulated over the years. So it's, uh, <laughs> I can't put it all online because of certain people using password as their password so certain things are blocked um so i use one um one mind map that has all of my responsibilities right and i go through those i say all right well uh i only have so much time to do this this and this and then i review that oh no i re actually pretty good about my work related goals because i review that um every every other day uh, especially when uh, things get, when I have a moment to actually sit down and like, okay, well, I know I had this project or this particular goal in mind. How do I get back to that? Um, or where am I with this? Or where am I with this? Because if I don't do that, someone else will. They'll come up to me and like, oh, hey, uh, you have this particular task. Uh, where is that? And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, that is the worst feeling of having someone call you up or talk to you about like oh the that task you did and you have no update you're like ah oh, well um sorry well i like you but next time we need to do this because then you know, that small task has grown to be something you 
uh, it's just ugly. You have to deal with it right away. Like that means everything else has to go down as far as priority because like this bubbled up. But you know, uh, that's pretty much um, that's how I do it. I, I just use a mind map to keep those things in in sync. For my life goals, uh, my personal stuff, I think I've been actually very good with that in the last maybe two years or so. And that's all thanks to the wonderful thing called a calendar. I think uh, Merlin Mann said it best that a calendar is a map of your time. So my wife and I, we used to have a, a, like a paper calendar hanging up. And that used to be great, but you know, as we have busy lives, like I'll do, I'll say, hey, yeah, I'm gonna go um, play Dungeons and Dragons with one of my friends, and then you know, I come back home. Oh, she's already written something on the calendar, and we had this thing like, okay, well, who gets to go first? So we switched to using our phone, and we put pretty much everything on the calendar, as far as uh, things that I'm doing things that the kids are doing. Uh, we have two kids, they have activities that they do. So we say, all right, well, what do we need to do in order to make sure that they're happy? So that our goals are to make sure that they're provided for. And then we just review our calendar. Now, when it comes to actual goal, right? Saying, okay, uh, we have a wish board, I don't have it here, uh, which is a giant picture of things that we want, things that are our goal. So we look at that and that keeps us somewhat on track. It's like a dream board more like, it's like, okay, well, if I want this, how am I going to do that? And I think there is a little bit of a gap on making sure that, hey, I want this. How do I do that? We are, I feel, doing very good as far as the day-to-day, -day, like making sure things are running smoothly. But uh, we want to own our own house. We want to buy a new car. Those, the way to get there is sometimes very sketchy where we save up and then I think maybe we need to review that because we're saving up, but then there are so many things that happen along the way that just make things so difficult. Like, so for example, right now we're renting. We've been saving up, but they raised our rent about $140. That's a, that's, uh, I mean, uh, I know Donald Trump, but that's a, that's, for me, that $140 means quite a bit. So, you know, I guess right now I'm kind of in the weeds right now. I have to regroup. So keeping my goals in mind, I just have to have faith that I can do what I'm doing right now to the day to day and just have that dream of like, what am I going to do to do that? in order to make sure that my kids are one day have their own house. Definitely. And, and like you said, you know, life throws curveballs. It absolutely throws a curveball at you, you know, and, and I think that's why this question is so important. And, and I like that you have, you know, you have a wish board. I really like that. And, and I haven't thought about using a mind map to visualize the higher end of, of the goals that I want to achieve. I think that's a great way to, uh, to do it. Um, I do think that having your goals and your tasks together can create some ambiguity. Um, like I said, you know, when you, when you think about like a goal, I think it's good to have tasks that help you achieve those goals. But I think that when you make your goals a task, um, that's, that's something that you know, is, is hard for me to accomplish because usually tasks have a task, have a deadline. Like this needs to be done by this time. If there's no deadline on your task, then your task isn't important to me. Like that, that's the way that I look at it. If someone says, Hey, can you do this one thing? Oh, well, when do you need it done? Oh, just anytime. No, 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 no. I, I need like a specific time. Otherwise anytime means never for me. Um, mm. so, but saying that, if I say that, hey, one of my goals is to, you know, maybe free up a little bit of income because I, I know that, you know, with rent, that rent's volatile. So it's like, hey, if, if rent's going to go up, I got to figure out how I can, you know, find that extra money somewhere. And that's actually, that's one of my goals now is to reduce my, um, my debt, my overall debt balance 
um, by a thousand dollars this year. It's like, Hey, if I got this amount of debt, I got this amount of money. Like what can I take out so that I can come up with that extra thousands of that extra thousand dollars to throw at my debt. And like you said, that's, I mean, that's not even a hundred dollars a month. That's like $80 a month. Like I have to somehow figure out where that's going to come from. And that's, to me, that's a goal because that involves several tasks. That's a, that's a whole project of, of figuring that out. You have to, you have to first know where everything is. And, and I think that that's the, for me, like I mentioned before, how do I keep my goals in mind? I put them everywhere. Like, and I, I say them actively. Like I'm, I make sure that when I go in, I say, okay, is this task aligned with my goals? If it's not aligned with my goals, then I don't need to worry about that task. And that's sometimes that's being cold. That's being cold to people that, you know, I, I don't, I don't have the best answer for them, but that's why we do things like this. I mean, I woke up this morning at like six thirty, and my wife's like, "It's a Saturday. Why do you wake up at six thirty on a Saturday?" And I said, "Well, I, I want to program and stuff, and then I have our roundtable at eight. So I need to make sure that if being a good mentor means being knowledgeable, which means actively working and progressing on my skills, so I have to make that time." And I'm okay with waking up at six, as I mentioned, doing things that you're comfortable with. And then on top of that, scheduling a time that allows me to come in and, and work with, work with other people in the community. You know, I I have to look at that and go, okay, well, if I'm comfortable waking up at six, I'm pretty sure other people on the East coast aren't comfortable waking up at six. So I need to make myself approachable and make myself available at that time. And then being a good family man means I can't make it too late in the evening because I know my wife and I are going to want to do stuff. So it's like whenever I do any kind of tasking or any type of planning for a project or a task, I look at my goals and my goals help define the actual task itself. All right. So... I guess, uh, do you have any, any closing thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, well, this whole conversation has made me think like, okay, well, I have goals in place right now. So I think uh, I have to have a, a sit down and think like, okay, well, where, what am I actually doing versus like, uh, am I, because I, I definitely don't feel like I'm achieving as much as I can be. So I, I have some things that are working. But I feel what I want to do is maybe set uh, a couple small goals for myself after this to like review what I want to do. Um, because if um, I know the world is chaotic, but like I'd rather have um, some kind of structure within that chaos that, all right, I, at least I was working towards something, and then plans change versus like, okay, things are going to change, but you know, I'm going to make the most of it. Um, there's been a lot of things that I had to adapt to over time, but, uh, I think that's what I'm going to do is like, uh, I'll probably, um, uh, have some people over right now, but, uh, I gotta carve out more time to like do more goal setting and making sure that my goals are up front. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Definitely. And, and one of the things that I, I do say with, with, uh, when I do any kind of, of uh, coaching or consulting for productivity is if you don't know what it is you want to do or should be doing, that's it. Like if, if you can't figure out, okay, where, where am I supposed to go from here? That's the task is figure out where you're supposed to go from here. Um, and I, I think that that's something that that people that set resolutions, you know, Oh, Hey, I'm going to do this. Okay, great. You, you have the end goal. Now map the course. Yeah. And when you map that course, some people do it by the seat of their pants. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to tell people which way is best for them. I think that people know how they best work, but I think that people often don't realize what it is that they're looking for. 
you know, as you mentioned, you have, you, you know that you need to do some review. I'm not going to tell you, well, first thing you need to do is open up this app and then write this stuff down. It's like, like that, that doesn't work for you, but being able to go in and say, okay, how do you, if you need to do some review, how do you make that time for you to do that review? And I, I think that's what will lead you. Cause I mean, like you said, you know, for you, it's like, you have a lot of things going on. Uh, you have a life, a lot of life happening and you have to find ways to carve out time. And, and you know, that's important. Sometimes you have to carve out time for myself. That's like I said, eight o'clock in the morning. I don't answer emails. I don't answer phone calls. You know, I'm in, I'm in my office figuring it out. I put my headphones in and it's like, I got my music playing. I, I set forest on my app so that I don't get any distractions. And it's like, all right, let's figure this out. Let's make this happen. And then at the end of the day, and where I, at the end of that session, I have a plan. And it's like, okay, now time to execute on. Yeah. So, so. I actually use Forest myself sometimes. And I feel like when I do sessions with Forest, those are the best. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Forest app. Um, I will include it in, actually, let me make a note of that to include that in the notes. Um, if you have an iPhone, I, I can't remember if it's on iPhone and Android or if it's just on iOS. Um, but I will send a link to the website. Um, but yeah, thank you for, uh, for jumping in on the first ever round table. It, I felt like it went smoothly. Yeah, of course we always want uh, more participants. So, uh, you out there watching on YouTube now, if you want to be a part of the community, there are two options for you head over to productivityintech.com slash join and sign up today. There you can see all of the great things that we have to offer and um, you'll get an invite to our next round table, which let me pull up really quick so I can tell everybody what we will be talking about next because I announced it and then wrote it down somewhere. We're going to be talking about time saving techniques. So one of those great discussions to have um, if you're interested in figuring out how to save a little bit of time for yourself or how to uh, make time, especially when you have to review your goals. So that's going to be on the first Saturday of February. Um, and then don't forget, we do have an upcoming round table um, that's open to the public. Anyone can join. Um, and that is going to be on what it was like to begin as a developer. I know a lot of people are wanting to learn how to code at the beginning of the year. That's one of their resolutions. So we're going to get in some beginners. We're going to get in some teachers and we're going to get in plenty of people that know a thing or two about code. And we're going to sit down and talk about it. But everybody, thank you for joining and have a good day.